Welcome to our water softening review. So in class today, there were lots of uh, puzzled looks by, I'd say, 80% of you. And so I thought I'd spend some time uh, rehashing some of these uh, key materials and concepts uh, and go over that example problem again to see if we can get this to crystallize uh, before we move on to some other topics. And so again, we're talking about water softening. And so again, we're trying to remove something from the water. And so uh, we're trying to remove calcium and magnesium from the water. And that would be 2 plus, and that would be calcium 2 plus. And so total hardness would be the sum of the calcium and magnesium. That's the typical constituents that we were most, uh, let's say, most, um, most interested in removing. Look at the carbonate hardness, and so that would be these species, calcium and magne magnesium, that are associated with the carbonate in the water. Non-carbonate hardness would be the calcium and magnesium that would not be associated with that. And so we looked at that bar diagram, which I'll, I'll draw here again, that um, discusses how those things are complexed or bound with that as part of the uh, water softening stages. So our primary constituents of what we add to the water to remove uh, these things from uh, water would be lime, and so that's typically quick lime, CaO. You can slate that to add water to it, and it's an exothermic reaction that's going to produce CaOH2. So that's our that's our lime slurry. The other thing that we add to the water, or can add to the water, is soda ash, and that is got the formula Na2S, Na2CO3. And that's typically for non-carbonate hardness, uh, NCH, uh, typically for soda ash. And so what we did in class today was to look at an example problem to uh, solve a water chemistry, find out what's in there. And so I've dragged this in now. So we have example problem. This is not from our textbook, but there's something uh, very similar to that. And we've got a groundwater uh, with the following analysis. Calcium at 75 milligrams per liter, magnesium, sodium, bicarbonate, chloride. Everything in here is in milligrams per liter of that specific constituent. We want to compute the total hardness, carbonate hardness, CH, non-carbonate hardness, all expressed in milligrams per liter, as CaCO3. So we've got to do a bunch of conversions to do this. So what we did is uh, we set up a table, and this is similar to the example problem that's in your textbook as well. That would be example problem uh, 10, 3, page 4, 21. Did notice there was one error in the textbook. Uh, the carbonate uh, concentration, the molar molecular weight uh, should be 61 and not 100 grams per mole. So it looks like another typo in our text. Okay, so what we want to do is set up a table, and it's a table similar to that example problem in the uh, textbook. And so we want to have the species. And we'll put the cations up first, and then we'll do the anions down at the bottom. So species, uh, concentration, and that would be milligrams per liter equivalent. Weight, milliequivalents per liter, and then milligrams per liter as CaCO3. And we can set up a table with these parameters. We'll put the cations up here and anions. And I'll stop here and just add this, and then you can... Um, and catch up. Okay, and so what I've done is now I've added uh, these concentrations of species. Equivalent weight. So equivalent weight uh, would be essentially the milligrams per liter species divided by the equivalent weight of the species. That's actually how we get the milliequivalents. And so equivalent weight. How do we do the equivalent weight that's here? So we would need to calculate or determine the molecular weight divided by the electrons transferred in a redox or the number of protons transferred in an acid base and it's typically the charge and so we would have the molecular weight divided by the charge uh, for calcium we have here at um, so the equivalent weight of this would be equal to 20 20.0 20 12.2 23.0 61.0, this is where the textbook had an error, 35.5 uh, and 
Next, the milliequivalents per liter. So to calculate that, uh, so that would be the, oh, how would we do that? So that would be the milligrams per liter of the species, all that divided by the equivalent weight of the species. All right, so 75 divided by 20 would give us 3.7, 3.3, 0 0.4. Sum those up and we get 7.4. Uh, for carbonate, 4.9, 0 0.3, 2.2 and sum those up and I hope we get the same 7.4 so that we have the sum of the anions and the cations in solution. Concentration, so again, uh, so it would be milligrams per liter at CaCO3 is the milligrams per liter of the species times 50 divided by the equivalent weight of the species. Um, and so we've done those calculations before. We should get 187, 164, 22 and so we sum those up and get a 246. Uh, let's see. Nope, actually that wouldn't be 246. That would be 373. And then we get 246, 14, and 113. Sum those up and we get the same. 373 milligrams per liter as CaCO3 would be in solution here. And again, this is just uh, times 50 uh, to get this value to convert it from milliequivalents per liter to as CaCO3. So we got these totals now. So the next uh, quest here is to draw a bar diagram with these uh, constituents. And so I did this in class uh, before. So we're going to put uh, the anions and the cations. And uh, so let's just draw our full bar diagram here. And we'll go down the middle here. And so we've got our cations. And we'll start with calcium first. So I always want to start with calcium. That's our most important constituent from a water softening perspective. Ca2 plus. Let's just do it in milliequivalents here. So we'll start with zero on this uh, point and we'll go how, how much we got calcium. So that would be 3.7. That's how much we have on there. Magnesium 2 plus and so this is going to go from 3.7 then we're going to add another 3.3 all right, so that's going to give us uh, 3.7 and 3.3 would be 7.0. And then our last one that we have on here is sodium Na plus 7.4. And so we know what these differences are from a graphical perspective. And this is our cations. Here's our anions. Now let's uh, do the same thing for our anions. So bicarbonate. HCO3. So here we have, uh, looks like, yeah, 4.9 equivalents. Uh, so it's going to be a little further. Let's just put that 4.9. What else have we got? Chloride is a, just a little teeny one. And then we have uh, sulfate, SO4 to minus. All right, so that would be 4.9 plus 0.3 would be 5.2 and 7.2 would be here. All right, so that's our bar diagram. And so now the next step is to identify uh, these specific uh, processes. So we want to compute the total hardness of this. And it's easiest just to use the bar diagram. So let's uh, look at total hardness in the water. So we can, uh, let's do this in yellow here. We're going to have lots of different colors here. Total hardness is going to be the amount of calcium and magnesium that we have in solution. And so we can add that up, and that would give us equals 7.0 milliequivalents per liter. We can also certainly calculate that uh, times 50 as milligrams per liter as CaCO3. Alkalinity would be next. All right, and I'll do that in yellow as well. Just uh, so alkalinity is going to be the amount of bicarbonate that we have in solution. So it looks like we have 4.9 milliequivalents per liter. Next question is uh, the carbonate hardness. Carbonate hardness, and so what of the calcium and magnesium? is bound with the carbonate in solution. And so I'll put that in blue here. And so we're looking for this much 
in solution. And so only to this point right there. So carbonate hardness would again, we, we've got that number right there, 4.9 milliequivalents per liter. Lastly, the non-carbonate hardness. So what of these species of calcium and magnesium is left that isn't bound with uh, the carbonate? And so let's put that in purple on here. So that's going to be just the magnesium that we have here. And that's what I've got shown in purple. So it's really this amount that is, uh, let's say, remaining. Oh, let's uh, just clarify. Let's make sure we get all our colors correct here. So that's going to be equal to what? And so i got to do this math in my head. It looks like 4.9 minus 7.0 would be 2.1 milliequivalents per liter is what's in that system. So that's the non-carbonate hardness that we have in our system. So lo and behold, it uh, looks like we have um, we've solved everything on this problem here. Uh, yep, and if we wanted to express that in milliequivalents, or it could be milligrams per liter SCACO3, we can just times everything by 50 of uh, these values that we have expressed here, and we can get that concentration as CaCO3, and that would be milligrams per liter. That would be there. So I'm going to stop here, and uh, we'll talk about the next phase, or the next uh, process, which is to determine the uh, lime and or soda ash dose that would be required for this process.